When moving to another city, especially if you're moving from across the country or state, let's face it, I'd rather know the bad stuff before I get there. So today we're gonna dive into all of the negatives that Charlotte has to offer. Now, I know, I sound like a negative Nelly and that's why you clicked on this video. So we're really gonna dive into all the crappy negative parts of Charlotte because you'd probably rather know before you go. If none of these work for you, or maybe one of them doesn't work for you, at least you know so you can pick another location. So let's dive in, and in this video, I'm gonna lay out all of the top negatives of Charlotte, North Carolina. And stick around at the very end, I'm gonna give you what I feel the top negative aspect of Charlotte is, and then you can make your own call. <music> Thing about Charlotte, North Carolina, eating, sleeping, and any kind of fun, the good, the bad, and everything in between, you've come to the right place. Be sure to like and subscribe and click on that little bell that's floating around down there to make sure you get notified of all upcoming videos. Whether you live in Charlotte or thinking about Charlotte or you're just interested to learn about other areas of the country, we're going to bring you consistent weekly videos to give you all the information you didn't know you needed about Charlotte. So let's dive into today's video and not waste any time. We have quite a few things to cover and today they're all negatives. That's right, today we're covering everything negative about Charlotte, North Carolina and why you might want to consider these factors before you move here. Let's start from the top. The heat. Yes, it is hot as Hades in summer. That's right, there is a pretty long one month stretch at minimum where, well, it's really, really hot. That's right, a lot of times we're getting up into the upper 90s, low 100s. Now, while that might not be a big deal for some of you, I'm gonna add one extra to you. The humidity. Yes, my hair might show it, but humidity is a real thing. Now, while my skin loves the humidity, unlike being in Arizona or Texas, other areas like that where it's dry, I will say, humidity mixed with heat, there's a reason people say it's a dry heat, because humidity makes it feel like it's at least 10 degrees hotter. So well, yeah, the heat and humidity kind of stink. There's a few upsides to it. One, everybody has air conditioning in North Carolina. That's right, like literally everybody. Your car, your house, your office building, no matter where you go, you can be shielded from the heat. Second off, we're really close to the mountains and the beach. That's right, we're only a two hour drive to the mountains, three and a half drive to a great weekend on the beach where you can enjoy some breezes and cool weather. Honestly, it just gives me an excuse to get out of town. But this brings me to my next point, fake seasons. That's right, my third piece on this list is fake seasons. You might be wondering, what does that mean? Well, here in Charlotte, we do have the four seasons. In case you're living in an area that doesn't have these, it's winter, spring, summer, and fall. All four of them show up, but it's the way in which they do it. So we start off in winter, let's say January. Then we have fake spring. Now, this is not like real spring. Fake spring is when it's the middle of February and we have a 75 degree day <laughs> for two days in a row. Everybody gets excited, they wanna pack away their winter coats, but just wait, it's gonna get cold again. So of course it does. And then it'll slowly warm up to actual spring. And then you have the pollening. I'll get back to that. <laughs> then you have fall summer. That's right, that's where in the middle of March or April, you have a 85 or 90 degree day out of nowhere. And sometimes it lasts like three days. And then it'll go back to being springtime and rain for about a week and then you're good to go. And then you're coming into early summer. And early summer is absolutely beautiful. It lasts about two, three weeks. It's amazing. And then it gets really hot. Remember that heat and humidity I was talking about? Really hot, like really hot. <laughs> Lots of humidity and that's gonna last at least a month. Now, one upside there, you do get plenty of pool time. Now after that, you get false fall. Now I think you're catching on to the trend here, right? False fall is for some reason for about three days it drops into the mid 60s and low 70s. 
Yeah, that's right. Girls are getting out their Ugg boots. There's pumpkin spice lattes that are on people's minds. And then it's going to jump back up to the 90s. So don't get ready for fall just yet. Now, fall for us really does not actually happen until late October. Now, for many of you sun lovers out there, I'm among you, this is a good thing. But fall really does not kick in till we're below the 70s until at least late October. But once that happens, it's fall for a short time and then you're gonna get some major cold snaps and then it's gonna get warm again and then it's going to freeze. Yes, that's right, somewhere between December and February, we are going to have frigid temperatures that, well, for us are frigid. I, growing up in New York, it's not too bad, but I don't like the cold. We're gonna be in the 30s. We're gonna have ice storms. We're gonna have maybe snow. We'll get to that. But here's the thing. Throughout the year, you might not know what the temperature is gonna be an hour from now or a day from now. In fact, I've been out riding my motorcycle in the middle of January when it's 75 degrees outside. So be prepared for anything. Now, on the bright side, if you really love the sunshine and you would love to get a little hint of summer when it's winter, you can definitely count on that here. Now, for those of you who are beach lovers, the other thing to think about, any of you coming from the west coast or the north, yes, we're three and a half hours from the beach, which is not bad. And in fact, we go out there quite a bit. But something to bear in mind is our water temperatures are way, way warmer, including our lake temperatures here, Lake Norman, Lake Wiley, all of the lake temperatures are warmer, which means it could be mid-October, even into early December, we're still getting temperatures in the ocean that are the same as New York on Long Island in July. That's right. You can actually go surfing as I do all the way through December and probably into mid-November, you probably wouldn't need a wetsuit. Pretty darn cool. So let's jump, jump into that little thing that I mentioned earlier called the pollening. <laughs> now, as you might recall or, or think about it, the pollening sounds like an event, and that's because it is. That's right. And around the time of early May, and I would say probably about late April, everything turns yellow. Now, this has shifted sometimes. Sometimes it's really like late March into early April. It depends upon what the seasons are doing. As I mentioned, they're all over the place. But for about a three week period, when the wind blows, it snows yellow. That's right. In our area, North Carolina, all the way out to Raleigh, and of course down into South Carolina, we are a hotbed for a beautiful tree known as the pine. Now here's the challenge, challenge or problem with the pine, as well as a few of the other trees that we have in the area. They have heavy pollen counts which means as you're riding down the road when the wind blows and you see the trees blow, you see tufts of yellow, like smoke billowing off of the trees. Now, for any of you who have allergies, yes, this goes to my next point, allergies. Allergies are rather prevalent, right? So number five on the list is gonna be allergies. Allergies are pretty high. Now, aside from you sneezing, you're also gonna to wanna to wash your car a few times because it's going to turn completely yellow. Now, here's the bright side. We have an incredible amount of honeybees and other such insects that are great for helping our crops and making sure that we actually have a really productive farm and agricultural lifestyle. So if you are a member of ag or if you have any interaction with that, which we all do because we eat food, it's actually a really good thing. The pollen and the pollinators are actually gonna make sure that it helps our ecosystem grow. So knowing that there's pollen falling from the sky means that I know that I'm gonna have food on my table in the next couple of weeks. Now, when it comes to allergies, I don't know what to tell you. Sniffly noses totally stink and I get them too, but Claritin and local honey are actually great antidotes to that. I take local honey all the way from March through May and I actually have alleviated most, most of my allergy symptoms. If you get it local, it helps you beat the allergens in that location. How cool is that? Now let's go to number six on my list. This one, not a fan, bugs. We have bugs. Now I'm sure some of you could have guessed this with the fact that we've got heat and humidity and well, we're in the South, but let me in or let me let you in 
on what the bugs are. See, I'm not a huge fan of bugs, although I love snakes and reptiles and animals of that nature. I don't like things that buzz in my ear, bite me, or things that crawl. So some of the top bugs that you're gonna run into in North Carolina, number one, mosquitoes. They are legitimately everywhere. Now, when you're walking down the street in downtown Charlotte, you're not gonna get swarmed. This is not Louisiana, sorry Louisiana. But if you're in your backyard, be expected that there's going to be mosquitoes. And well, as much as I hate them, yes, they do feed the ecosystem. There are some great ways to battle them and I highly recommend Tom's Mosquito TNT. That's right, they sell them across the country. If you have problems with that, go check it out. It's a little bucket and it literally blows them up. Uh, I don't know how it does it, but it has kept the mosquitoes down in our backyard at least. <laughs> One of the other bugs that we have are June bugs. Now June bugs sound absolutely beautiful in the middle of the night when you're sitting out enjoying a cocktail on your back porch, but they will run right into you. I'm not even kidding. They're like mini torpedoes that will fly into anything in their way and then they'll bounce off of you. Now they're completely harmless. They're not gonna bite you. They're not gonna hurt you but they are in the form of a beetle and I'm just not a fan of beetles. They creep me out. So yes, they are around, they're going to be everywhere, but just enjoy the sounds. And if you get thudded in the head, that's what it was. <laughs> and one of our other top bugs that you will encounter. Now, growing up in New York, I always thought that this was because you were dirty, but it turns out once you move to the South, it just means that you have trees somewhere in your backyard and this is palmetto bugs. That's right, palmetto bugs. I'm sure you've heard of the palmetto state. Well, a palmetto benno bug is basically a really nice name for a very large cockroach. And I will put this out there, they do fly. <laughs> I learned that the hard way, but yes, they do fly. Now, once again, palmetto bugs are completely harmless. They're large. It does not mean that you have an infestation that your house is dirty. But in fact, they love moisture and they love the woods. You have a more high likelihood of having them in your home, creeping and crawling in, if you do live near woods. Some of the ways to prevent this, if you have a home that's on a slab um, or a newer home having newer windows or vents and things of that nature that of course try to keep the creepy crawlies out, that's gonna help. In addition, having a weekly or should I say monthly servicing on the exterior perimeter of your home is actually gonna keep them out of the house. And this goes for any one of these bugs. Now for mosquitoes, you can have your backyard sprayed. I prefer not to, but you can have your yard sprayed and it'll keep away the mosquitoes. Well, that was two out of three of them keeping them away. I've got no plan for your June bugs, but <laughs> they are harmless. They don't come inside. You just might hear a thud on your back window every now and then if you're inside watching TV. Now let's talk number eight on my list. Venomous snakes, yes. We have them. Now, I know you're probably not surprised by that because every other area of the country also has venomous snakes. Now, here's the cool thing. Unlike places like the desert or Texas, Phoenix, things of that nature, we don't have scorpions plus venomous snakes plus other species that want to kill you. We really only have venomous snakes. And honestly, the actual interaction with humans and venomous snakes is extremely minor. In fact, they would rather avoid you than bite you. But let's take a look at the venomous snakes that we have in the area. One would be the cottonmouth. Now the cottonmouth, they do live closer to water. They're closely related to the water moccasin. Both of those are venomous snakes. You're not gonna encounter them very commonly in your backyard while you're gardening or things like that. However, the biggest nope rope, as my friends have described it to me, is called the copperhead. Now the copperhead has been, of course, there's other snakes that look similar to it and have mis been misdiagnosed or misrepresented, but the copperhead can be noted, and I'm sure there's an image that'll pop up, by what looks like a Hershey's Kiss type marking on the side of their sides. It's very easy to distinguish as well as a more triangular shaped head. While copperheads are prevalent to the area, once again, the likelihood of you being bit by one is pretty minimum. And in fact, I've run into one or two in my yard in the last several years and they usually run away. So there are other snakes that you should probably take count of. Here's one of the best snakes that we have, black snakes. Black snakes are phenomenal to have around, great to have in your yard. 
Among the fact that they eat, well, rats and other such rodents, they also kill venomous snakes. That's right, one of their favorite pastimes is to kill and eat copperheads. So if you see a black snake, leave it alone. In addition, we also have very simple, straightforward brown snakes, garden snakes, worm snakes. They literally wiggle like a worm. They're about the size of one too. But all these snakes are completely harmless. So before taking action or taking their head off, be sure to double check because copperheads are few and far between, but these other amazing snakes are a huge part of our ecosystem and actually help North Carolina be what it is today without you being overrun by mice and other rodents. So let's get away from nature for a little while. Yes, nature can be a bummer and be amazing all at the same time. And honestly, the weather and everything that I mentioned are also a reason why so many people come here. But many people are coming here. Number nine, a ton of transplants. I'm among them, I can't speak too negatively about it. But here's the thing, you would be hard pressed to find a native charlatan in Charlotte. In fact, when someone says, oh yeah, I grew up here, it's kind of like a, really? That's so intriguing. Tell me more about this. That's right. The majority of the population of Charlotte is actually transplanted from other locations. Now, while that might seem like a bummer because there's no defined culture of what Charlotte was, here's the cool thing. With everybody moving here from across the country and across the world, we have people from all different nations that actually live here in Charlotte. It's actually increased the diversity of food, culture, music, art, entertainment, and more. And with that, of course, comes even more creativity, fun, and the ability to go out and enjoy these things with you and your family. So as a transplant from New York, yes, there's a lot of us here, but guess what? It's just making it better. So that brings us to our next point. With so many people moving here, we have traffic. That's right, yes, we do have traffic. Now it's not LA traffic, it's not New York traffic, it's not gonna take you six hours to go from Brooklyn all the way to the other side of New Jersey. Like that's not what we're talking here. But we do have traffic. Charlotte has over 100 people moving here per day. And what that's done is, is it's upped our trajectory to be closer to the size of Atlanta within the next 10 to 15 years. While Charlotte is working really diligently to ensure that they're laying out plans for infrastructure, it's not quite keeping up. Now, while I can complain because I got a little bit spoiled, I will say the traffic's not that terrible. You're gonna get stopped up in certain locations and yeah, it's gonna be a bummer. I will say your best bet for avoiding traffic is to live on the northern side of Charlotte, Huntersville, Davidson, Denver, those areas. You're going to see your highest impact of traffic in the lower quadrant of Charlotte as well as Ballantyne, Fort Mill, and Rock Hill, South Carolina coming into town, and Waxhaw. That's right, it'll be about a 50 minute commute to an hour from Waxhaw to downtown Charlotte, if that is where you work. Now, bear in mind, while I-77 is usually backed up in some point or another throughout the day, anywhere further south than the actual city center, there are ways to get around it. In addition to that, 45 and 85 are all being expanded and constantly improved. And there's even talk of an additional rail system to help alleviate the traffic and congestion. Now, one thing I will say as a positive to all of this, while we do have traffic, we also have people that know how to move. <laughs> you are gonna find that almost every single interstate, people move quickly when given the opportunity. This brings me to number 10 of things I hate about Charlotte, and that's bad drivers. Aside from Florida, sorry Floridians, but you know, when you know, you know, Charlotte and North Carolina in general have terrible drivers. I don't know what it is or why it is, but I was taught you pass on the left and you sit on the right if you have to sit. But here's the thing. People don't quite know how to drive the way I was taught how to drive. And when you add in weather of any kind, I'm talking a passing thunderstorm, snow, ice, anything, people really forget how to drive. And in fact, yes, we do have accidents and fender benders are prevalent. Now, one thing I will add to this, while I don't feel like there's the greatest of drivers here in Charlotte, and sometimes I would drive down the road going, what are you thinking? Why are you doing that? Why are you texting? Who reads books while they drive? While all of these are a thing, 
I will say one thing, and it goes back to what I mentioned earlier. Those that move know how to move. And what I mean by that is on I-77, 85 and 45, if you aren't going 15 to 20 miles an hour over the speed limit, you're going slow. That's right. And honestly, most of the people that are riding on these roads, if you are avoiding those bad drivers that are getting in your way, most of the traffic is gonna run about 15 to 20 miles per hour over the speed limit. Now, for those of you who actually drive the speed limit, it's okay, there are lanes for you, so don't worry. But for those of you who really wanna get going and make up good time, there is a space for you here in Charlotte. I'm one of them to any officers watching, I'm sorry. <laughs> So number 11 on my list, people are too nice. That's right. Honestly, people can be almost a little bit too nice, whether it's bumping into somebody at the grocery store and they want to tell you all about their day and say hi and ask you how your day was, which I kind of like, or giving you a full blown story when you just ask for directions. This is something that you can totally expect from Charlotte. That's right. People are really nice. They really want to engage and they're gonna give you a friendly smile as you walk down the street. It's not weird, they're not hitting on you. In addition, get ready for this. People wave to you while you're driving down the road. Now, while myself and my dad had a miscommunication thinking that people were flipping us off, yes, that shows you where I grew up. In fact, it was just a lazy wave of people going like that as we were driving down the road. People actually wave, people actually smile, people actually go out of their way to help you. And to be perfectly honest, it's a breath of fresh air. I'm somebody who likes to interact. I like to smile. I like to engage with others. I do have a cutoff. I don't need a life story and what's going on for the next 15 years. However, it's really nice to know that you can smile, wave, engage with others, especially when we've been through so much over the last few years with a pandemic and being locked up. People still know how to and desire engagement. Here's the cool thing. Get out of jail free card. If you don't like human interaction, DoorDash and Instacart are real things. And yes, it is okay, you can use them. <laughs> now number 12 on my list of things that I honestly don't like about Charlotte. There are about 100,000 coffee shops and different food restaurant item options in Charlotte. That's right, when I'm trying to figure out what I want for dinner or what for a snack or where to meet somebody, I have way too many options, like literally way too many options. I swear there's a coffee shop or a ramen place or a new soda shop or sandwich shop or Indonesian food, literally anything you could possibly think of popping up every other day. <sighs> now, I love good food, but sometimes too many options makes me kind of clam up and what do I do? I usually go back to what I know. So whether you're an adventurer of food and always want to try new restaurants, this may be the place for you. If you're someone who wants the best spot and that's the only place you're going to go and you are perfectly fine with that, I'm with you there. I have my favorite spots and I don't have to look at the menu because I already know what I want. So if you're among those people, I'm with you. I feel you. But honestly, if you're someone who likes to get out and be a little adventurous with food, check out the new speakeasy or bar, or just sit back and relax at the cat cafe. Yes, we have a cat cafe where you can play with cats, drink coffee and read a book. So if that's you, it's all available in Charlotte, which is really cool. So if you need variety, which apparently is the spice of life, we have just about every food, bar, drink option you could possibly desire. Now, last but not least, I know you've given you a lot to chew on here and decide whether this is the place for you, but let's talk ice storms. That's right. Honestly, ice storms are a thing here in Charlotte. Now, I don't know where you're from in the country where maybe tornadoes or earthquakes are more prevalent. Maybe it's hurricanes on the coast. Well, here in Charlotte, we really don't get any of that. In fact, we don't get much bad weather at all. We might get a severe thunderstorm here and there, but honestly, it's not too bad. What we do get, however, are ice storms. That's right, normally Charlotte does not get snow. In fact, the last decent snowstorm we had was about 10 inches, and that was back in 2014, just to give you a little bit of idea on that. Instead, we may get a dusting of one to two inches, but normally we get ice. Now, part of the reason for this is our location. Yep, if you take a look at a map and take a look at the location, 
It just doesn't provide us enough cold air to truly freeze it before it hits the ground, but it provides plenty of cold air to freeze overnight. Now, this can provide or show or have a lot of risky situations if you get out on the road. So most people avoid it. In fact, if we're gonna have any kind of winter weather, and I'm not even kidding you, any kind of winter weather, I use air quotes because I grew up up north, this is nothing. But if we have any kind of winter weather, the city basically shuts down. Everyone's told to stay home, businesses are closed, shops are closed, schools are closed. You might as well just pull up a cup of uh, hot chocolate and sit there and watch it not snow. <laughs> But I will say this, even if we do get what would be an inch or two of snow, the roads can still be treacherous. Now, when I first moved here, I thought that was absolutely comical because how could the roads be treacherous with two inches? Well, from any of you that have moved or lived in a place where it is snowy, you understand that we put sand and salt onto the roads and we have plenty of er, plows. Here in Charlotte, we don't. Instead, we put a salt brine, which is a mixture of salt and water out onto the roads about the day of or the day before a storm, and there are not enough plows to plow. In fact, we have 12 plows that we share among four to five counties, and let's face it, it's just not enough to keep those roads clear enough. So, best option, stay home, let the sunshine do its thing and melt it away, and enjoy your cozy socks and snuggie while lighting up a fire and drinking some hot cocoa. So, uh, thank you for joining me and listening to all of these cons of Charlotte. I've got one last thing to say and it's summing up what I think is the absolute worst thing about Charlotte among everything on this list. And to be perfectly honest, the worst thing is that all of these things on this list are really not even that bad. That's right. The worst thing is that there really isn't anything to truly hate about Charlotte. Every single item on this list is something that actually either has a workaround or has something that's not terribly bad. Now, while I hate the cold, I would say if it was my absolute worst thing, it would be the dead of winter when it's freezing out and I can't go truly enjoy the nature that is here in Charlotte, as well as outdoor dining. <laughs> but truly, Charlotte has so much to offer, so many positives and negatives. And the coolest thing is, with every negative that I mentioned, there truly is some kind of positive. So if you are looking to move to Charlotte, I'd love to help you make this the place that you call home. Whether it's nine days or 90 days from now, whether you're moving across town or across the country, myself and my team would love to assist you in making your move exactly what you want it to be and find you exactly the home that you desire or help you sell the home that you're in. Until our next video, I look forward to seeing you around town and be sure to like and subscribe and leave me a comment. What are some of the things that you want to know about Charlotte or what should I take a deeper dive on? I want to hear from you. I want to provide you all the information you need to make your move as smooth as possible. Till next time, this is Kayla Lindsay with the True Lane Group out of Charlotte, North Carolina. I'll see you soon.